Hello and welcome to this week's video on our series, Keep Taking the Tablets. We're looking at the Ten Commandments and this one is commandment number eight, racing through them now. And it's a pretty straightforward one. I don't even need to get my Bible up to read it. You must not steal. So let's have a little bit of an explore about this and I reckon we'll get this one done in no time at all. It's interesting to think that everything that we read about stealing in the Bible from Genesis right the way through to Revelation is written for people who believe in God. What's God's big problem with stealing? Well, remember that if the Ten Commandments are about the best relationships that we can have, stealing affects our relationship with other people, quite obviously, but it also affects and perhaps reflects our relationship with God. What do I mean? Here we go. If we trust God to provide for us, then stealing becomes much less of a temptation. We believe that God is there for us and he will give us what we need. So we don't have to start stealing to provide for ourselves. We can trust in God. So it reflects our relationship with God, but it affects our relationship with other people. If we steal, we create relationships and even a society that just doesn't work properly. What kind of things can we steal? So I've thought of three things, they're all quite obvious, that we can steal and that God wants us to show our integrity and to leave well alone. So the obvious one, let's get that out of the way first, is money and possessions. We can steal those off other people. We cannot trust God to provide for us. We can decide that we want to take something that we haven't worked for, we haven't earned, and so we can steal money or possessions. Pretty straightforward one. And this is probably the main one that most of us think of when we think about the idea of stealing. What else can you steal? I'm gonna suggest that you can steal time. If you've been given an assignment and you've been told to take 45 minutes on it and you take 30 minutes on it, you've stolen some time. If you're sat in that Zoom lesson or that Zoom meeting and you put your screen on blank so that you can play on your phone or do something else, you're stealing time that's committed to other things. It's very, very easy for us to see this as a victimless crime. Oh, you know, I'm just gonna do something a bit slower or I'm gonna, you know, they don't need to know I only spent 10 minutes tidying my room instead of the hour they asked me to do it. But actually stealing always has a consequence for a relationship. That's why God doesn't want it to happen. It's one of those things that's very easy for us to tolerate in ourselves, doing something a little bit slowly, having a bit of a longer break, putting our phone on and doing something when we should be concentrating on something else. But stealing is stealing. And the last one that I thought I'd cover, I'm calling it reputation. You can steal reputation. So for example, gossiping about somebody else, taking part in sharing things that may or may not be true that bring somebody down. You're stealing reputation. We could even be kind of stealing God's reputation if we take his name in vain. Just like we were looking at in that commandment, you know, if we say we're gonna do something as Christians and we don't do it, we're kind of affecting God's reputation in the eyes of other people. So this is another type of stealing that we probably don't think too much about, but it's actually very easy to fall into and obviously affects our relationship with God and our relationship with other people. Let's be very careful that we don't steal people's reputation. I'm not gonna to say too much on this one because it's a big part of the next commandment that we're gonna look at next week. Ephesians chapter four is a really brilliant chapter of the Bible and actually reflects a lot of the commandments. I'll give you a little bit of a challenge to read through it and see how many of the commandments are actually in there and being talked about in this letter. But I want to read a little bit about stealing from this particular chapter. So I'm looking at Ephesians chapter four and I'm reading from verse 28. If you're a thief, quit stealing. Pretty straightforward advice. Instead, use your hands for good hard work and then give generously to others in need. Brilliant. So if you are stealing, first thing to do, stop it. 
If you know you're taking somebody's possessions or money, their time, their reputation or anything else that doesn't belong to you, stop doing it. Start to trust that God can provide for you and start to live the right way so that he can do the most in your life that he wants to do. Number two, do something positive about your situation. Now, obviously for an adult here, the advice is go and get a job and start earning money. You might say, well, that's not really the position that I'm in. Okay, instead of stealing time, give that time back. Invest more time in your studies instead of taking the time away. Pay back what you've stolen through hard work. Interestingly, in most cultures, when the Bible was written, stealing was punishable by death. And the Bible is really the first of the, the instructions that come to man that say, listen, for stealing, restoration. So instead of somebody paying with their life, they instead are expected to work hard and give back what they stole and more than they stole. I think it's in Exodus 22 that it talks at quite long length about this and talks about paying back four or five times what's stolen. And we see that with tax collectors in the New Testament, that when they meet Jesus, they say, look, I'm gonna pay back more than I took. They understood that concept in Exodus 22 about paying back more. So here's a challenge for you. If you have been sneakily on your phone when you should have been concentrating on a Zoom lesson or something else, invest a bit more time in your studies. Go the extra mile to get back that investment. It'll benefit you, it honors God, and you're working hard to undo something that you shouldn't have done in the first place. Really good biblical principle, work hard. Remember that work comes before the fall in Genesis. Work is not a product of sin. Work is something that we are designed to do and get immense satisfaction from. And the last thing is give. Again, you might not be able to do this financially, but perhaps you can, perhaps you get pocket money, perhaps your parents let you keep what's left over from your bus fare after school or something like that, and you, you have a bit of income coming in, I don't know. But look for opportunities to give some of that away. It doesn't have to be a ransom, but we're called to give. We're called to give 10% to God, and we're told not to rob God in that, not to steal from God in our tithe, but we're also called to be a generous people. And interestingly, in this verse, it says that you may be able to give to people. You've got a choice. Give your tithe to God and you may choose to give more. It's something that God really, really wants us to do. If you haven't got finances to be able to do that, if money is not something that's readily available to you, you can always give your time, your talents, your encouragement, your kind words. There are lots of ways of giving back. If you've been a gossip, maybe you need to invest in some positive and encouraging language. Simple.